Okay, I'll uh, call this uh, meeting to order at 7.30. First of all, I'd like to uh, welcome Mr. Roger Bouvier as our assistant or our help, I guess, in, with our administration. So welcome, uh, Mr. Bouvier. Thank you. And then I also welcome all our audience here tonight as well. So moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Gray, resolved that the agenda for the December 4, 2018 regular meeting council be received as amended. All in favor? Moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Gray, resolved that the minutes of the November 20th, 2018 regular meeting meeting of council be adopted as received. All in favor? Ms. Carey. <coughs> All right, so we'll re head right into our delegations, and uh, we have here from Sustainable Development, Mr. Sean Lamb and, uh, and his partners with them, so we want to move forward and we'll let you speak uh, on your... Uh... Okay. I've got hard copies of everything I'm going to talk about there for you, as well as business cards there, so I can hand them out ahead of time if it works okay with you. Okay. 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 Okay.
waste recyclables that are generated within the Duck Mountain Provincial Park. Uh, some of you folks do look a bit familiar. I was back, I was here in, I believe it was 2014 or 2015. We had the same thing in the circumstance at that point in time. I know with your current landfill at that point wasn't able to accept it due to classification facilities. So we're really hoping now that perhaps there's something that has changed on your end and maybe you folks would be interested in working with us to form some form of an agreement for the acceptance of the, of the waste there. We're almost certainly willing to pay any associated fees that you folks come up with. Um, our current situation, we have a transfer station in the South Ducks. That services Childs, Blue, Singush area. Wellman Lake currently has a landfill there, but it's nearing its capacity. So that's where now our focus is, okay, what are we going to do when the landfill of Wellman is no longer viable? Um, we feel right now probably two to three years left for the Wellman Lake landfill, but we're really seeing that there's a lot more waste being generated there, so hence it's really hard to dictate for certain how much longer it's going to actually be operational. So I say two to three years, but very cautious on that one there. So hence we really want to start doing our homework ahead of time to prepare for the future so we know where we're going to be at. We currently have contract, contracts for hauling and acceptance of waste and recyclables for the South Duck Transfer Station. With it, we see our recycles going to Dauphin, and we see our garbage going to Gilbert Plains, to the landfill there. So, like I say, that's kind of their coming and due. So now's a really good time for us to look at the whole Duck Mountains all at one time, and then kind of see if you folks would be interested in going with us. You know, we most certainly would be prepared to do a portion of it, or perhaps all of it, depending on what kind of an arrangement we can, we can come to. Um, for comparison's sake, we do have the agreement, like I say, with the RM of Gilbert Plains there, so I'm not so sure you know, but I suspect likely the municipality may be willing to share information with you guys to understand and know what we've already done there. I can most certainly give you some information, but I most certainly can't give you the full, the full uh, agreement that we have with them. They most certainly may choose to, to work with you guys on that part. As far as volumes, what we see right now, according to our records for Wellman and Glad Lake, we average around 85 to 90 tons of refuse on an annual basis and an average around three to four tons of recyclables. Now the recyclables presently are hauled into Swan River here and accepted with Swan Valley Lions. Now the garbage one or the refuse have to be careful with that number. We work through the wars program and in that program we measure the loads by volume not by weight. So it's quite misleading. Through experience that we witnessed through the South Duck Transfer Station, we saw what we thought were our projected numbers and estimated numbers to drop quite substantially when we actually got to the stage of remaining the waste. So I say 85 to 90, that's just based on the WARS formula, and I'm sure some people in the room will be quite familiar with what their process is there. But that's how we came to ours. Uh, the South Duck Transfer Station, just for comparison, and I've thrown all this in there for you folks, but down there, we average around 28 tons of household waste being generated on an annual basis. We've got really good records for 2015, 2016, and 2018, as you'll note on my paper that I provided. You may wonder why not 2017 showing up. We had circumstances there, though, with due to staffing situations within our region. We had to make some adjustments, so hence we were able to kind of track things as closely as what we would really like to do. So that's why there's a bit of a, of a gap in there. Um, we also have a um, what we refer to as boon that gets generated, and there's about five and a half tons of that. And when we talk boon, it's waste that's generated kind of outside household garbage, outside of recyclables, and it's basically made up of industrial construction, demolition, waste, furniture, those, those types of products. So we also get up until obviously dispose of those. On the recycling side, there's around six tons of recyclables that are currently being generated at the South duct transfer station and it's made up of glass, tin, plastic, some cardboard and some paper also being gathered. We currently separate those commodities. That would be something once we get into this further with you folks if that doesn't work out with you guys that maybe we have to look, would you accept it as a mixed recyclables or does it need to be sorted? So I'm not sure how you guys view that aspect. Trees, branches, brush, stumps, those types of things, we take care of that within the park itself. We have some designated areas where those things can be hauled to. Um, as I mentioned earlier, there are household waste that's all reported through wars. That's the Waste Reduction and Recycling Support Program there, so those numbers 
the formula that they give us there, it's a little bit tough to really give concrete numbers for what we're seeing at well. But by the records that we've got, that's that's the best we can offer right now is 85 to 90 tons. Uh, what else have I missed on here? I think I've got the most of it there. Basically, with all of that being said, our intent would be to see if council would consider accepting all or a portion of our waste. I realize that that's perhaps not something you folks can deal with an answer right now. You may have subcommittees that you want to have us meet with further, anything like that. But that's kind of our intent and our proposal would be to see if you folks would be willing to work with us in that regard. We're certainly willing to, to pay a fee for, for that service. And any questions at this point in time that I can help with? Okay. So thank you. And uh, yeah, if any uh, member of council has any questions, Councilor White? Just uh, relative to Weldon and, and <coughs> basing your mass is based off truckloads at Refuse Hall and it's somewhat misleading. Do you feel it's too high or too low, that number? We're figuring that the number's too high. Based on what we experienced at the South Duck, South Duck, yeah, the number that we have reported by volume. So the way they do it, they measure it by a truckload yeah. and then it equates into a certain amount of tons. But we don't actually weigh it. Yeah. So it, that's where when we did the South Duck Transfer Station, we did the same kind of an idea proposal and we found that we were projecting, I don't know the numbers off the top of my head doing, but we were projecting the numbers to be fairly high when in fact we started to actually weigh it. But the number dropped down quite substantially. Thank you. Yep. Councilor Gray. So it's, the waste is less dense than the average dent because it would be done bit based on, on, on formulas. So it's less dense than the average waste, that's what you're saying? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I guess not so much a question, just a comment. We're having our uh, uh, environmental committee meeting on December 11th. If we can add this to the agenda, and then we'll be able to get back to them. So yeah. To, to suggest that it be referred to that committee right. for yeah. transportation and environmental health. Yeah. yeah. I'll yeah. be there. So. Okay. Okay. I, and well, we'll we're going to be looking at these numbers, and we'll we'll apply it to where we're at, even according to how it's going to affect us on the rivers program. And of course, with our classification, which we're. Well, that was going to be my next comment. Was uh, uh, Derek, if you could get the data on on how uh, sustainable development classifies landfills, because I know we're right near the threshold, and that was the issue back in 2014 when, when uh, these fine people came to came to visit. And I know we've done some improvements to the landfill, but uh, yeah, if we can look at how these numbers will affect whether we're reclassified or not, or or. Be reclassifying might not matter to us now right because we know we're probably heading there eventually yes and we've got a new like a new license this year there so there's new regulations we're getting but yes all that information will grow up on the alone does sustainable development solely base your landfill classification on area server now that we have uh, scale do they have a, a it's, uh, it's weight. It's weight okay okay so we can we'll can discuss that at our committee meeting but yeah. so they they you go oh, sorry worship so why? So you should know those numbers too, because obviously that's going to change your perspective. Because what goes over into our landfill is mass. Yeah. And you pay, or we all pay. Yeah. You might need those numbers. Okay. Any other further questions? Okay. Well, thank you very much for your presentation, and like it's been noted that uh, the committee will look at it and we'll get back to you. That sounds great, and I heard that December the 11th, so on my note, you'll notice I was kind of wondering about a bit of a time frame. So yeah, we're meeting December 11th, so that's, that's, perfect. that's fabulous in our regard there, then it helps us just plan a little bit faster, too, so that's great. The meeting about garbage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, all the fun stuff, right? Yeah. 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 We do it all the time. Well, this is closing. I'd like to say again, I appreciate the opportunity to present to you folks. Thanks for This is nice. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. All right, so moving on to uh, correspondence, uh, we have some information there from Water Conservation District uh, in regards to the realignment of the boundaries. Uh, we'll see a letter there for some uh, information as well as the map. Uh, I don't know if Councillor Gloria has any uh, comments on this as this is... No, 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 I should. Oh, I'm sorry. Councillor Wett. No, 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 I should. Just of my basement. Well, Councilor Delory. Oh, it is? Okay, well, we haven't had a meeting. <laughs> 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 
Okay. So I'm right? <laughs> yeah, you're right. I was just going to ask whoever was on the uh, watershed if they knew how, how it shook out because I don't think it changes our boundaries. No, it doesn't really affect us uh, very much at all. As far as which municipality, which? It takes a little bit out of the park and it takes a little bit out of the North Mountain. But all the same municipalities are all involved. Mm -hmm. yeah. It doesn't have any effect right. in terms of municipal relations. Mm -hmm. okay. So we have a resolution moved by Councillor Doria, second by Councillor Gray, resolved that the Watershed Conservation District update on boundary realignment be received. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. <coughs> All right, moving right down to reports. We'll start with the Superintendent of Works report. Questions to Mr. Poole. Go ahead, Mr. Councillor. Mr. Poole, um, I see, how did the meeting go with the Prairie Mountain Health with the airport incident on the 11th side? We don't need to go into specifics, but did uh, we come to uh, some resolution on that? We did, yeah. The, the correct information has been passed both ways and just to ensure that that incident doesn't happen again. Mm -hmm. So everybody on PMH will be informed of the uh, process and it should not happen again. Okay. Councillor White? Uh, what happened? Uh, we, well, there was a light flight and uh, a member of the PMH decided to hire a private contractor to plow the runway who is not certified and did not follow the Transport Canada regulations to be able to So that person that's been chatted to and said, hey, no, that's the town's responsibility, not the, that individual, so they won't do that again? Yes. Okay, thank you. Councilor Delorier. So in the correctives from this, was there any changes to the procedures as far as the town's part of the procedure? No, no. Okay. The PMH and the town felt that there is no need in process. It just resulted in a lack of knowledge of the process on the PMH side. Okay. Okay, so moved by Councillor uh, Lentoni, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Please all let the Superintendent of Works report be received. Further discussion? All in favor? No, I have further discussion. On uh, the garbage truck update, I know the garbage truck has come up in your report the last few meetings. Can you have a report on our December 11th meeting on yeah. on what uh, what our repair bills are looking like and comparisons to past years? That's already happening. Okay. All in favor? Carried. Just, sorry. Go ahead, Councilor Gray. I know you raised it before about the labor refusals with respect to the uh, lines recycling. Can you just remind us about what that is? Uh, whenever our trucks are not available, uh, in the past the lines have used a basically it's a big blue trailer with, right. with separate compartments in it uh, to, to carry the commercial cardboard. Uh, in order to get the cardboard out once it's in, the employee has to go inside of that comp each compartment separately and they believe there's safety issues and refuse to to do it. What safety issue is that? I'm pretty sure. You know what? To be honest, uh, I've never seen them do it. Or, or I, like the the Lions is their own. They're their own contractor, and they have their own employees. And their issues are their issues. Oh, it's just it, nothing to do with us. No, it has nothing to do with the town. So if, if they don't want to use that, if they want to use a wheelbarrow, they can use a wheelbarrow. Okay. I, I just thought it was us, our people, who were kind of saying really. So uh, as a follow-up to Councillor Gray's question, so when they do, do the refusal, do we do they still provide the service by whatever alternate means they, they do, or that we don't we're not receiving the service when they do the We are not receiving the service when they do that. It's even like the truck the mechanics have gotten the second truck back, so it, it's back to normal now, but it's costing the town a lot of money. We pay for all those repairs. We don't charge them to use the truck. The the lions when they when they when our second truck is down, they use a three quarter ton, and they they get maybe like ten percent of the days off. Not even that, I would say, <coughs> of days only. Like basically, recycling is shut down. So it was for several weeks. I'm sure the business has noticed. Uh, they try and get the heavy users the best they can. They do try, but it's not good enough. We don't receive any. Uh, we don't pay them any less. Like an annual cost. I guess 
we, we pay we pay per weight, but we don't receive their financial statements. We never have. It's it's, it's a real issue. We have to look at this. So that'll be all part of the discussion on the. Is that going to be on the view? Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. But I don't need to worry about it. Yeah. Our committee will worry about it. Right. Okay. <clears throat> Moving on, uh, we have uh, Councillor, uh, moved by Councillor <coughs> Boreal, seconded by Councillor Fries, the result of the Swan Valley Credit Union Aquatic Facility Building Condition Assessment Report be received. So we have that there now as a public document. Uh, question for my. Uh, is it open to the public? Once this is uh, passed, then it becomes a public document. I was just wondering if it would it become. Can we upload that up on, on our website for anybody to read that, or will we have hard copies in the office for people? We can have uh, both, for the council's wishes. Okay, Since it's being used as part of a legal action, sh should we get our advice from our lawyer whether whether this sh should be public? Like, should we table this resolution okay. and get advice from our lawyer whether? I have, no, I'm, I have no problem with it. If, if there's no problem with it, then I have no problem with it. Right. I believe taxpayers have a right to know wh what's going on there, but I don't want to hinder any kind of legal actions that may be taking place. Okay. That's, if, if that's the wish of the mover and the senator, I, I don't have a problem with that either. If that's what... It never occurred to me that we were going to make it publicly accessible until we sort of process what we were going to do because there are a number of issues I think are standing and before we amongst other things we should make sure that we have more than just the report so it's not taken out of context okay. so for me I would rather we make sure that it's released in a way that it will be informational not destructive okay so the wish to uh, table then we need a resolution for that, or we just table it? Just, just table, table it till the next meeting, as far as I know. Okay. So the mover and the second are agree to that? Okay. Will, uh, Councilor Dory. Will, uh, will you speak with our legal counsel and, and get advice on whether, what, what this, how this impacts our, uh, any legal action that's going on? Speaking in public, yeah. Okay. All right, then moving on, uh, moved by Councillor Fries and second by Councillor Wintoni, result that the management minutes be received. So there's uh, for the 15th, the 22nd, and the 29th, questions to management. Councillor White. Uh, Derek, I hope that you help me. I just uh, have some empathy for our, our new clerks. Uh, I'm hoping it's not too onerous on them for you know, a bigger workload than they expected. They are. They're doing a good job. They there is a they they're covering a, a big workload right now, and they're they're tackling it. They're stepping up to the plate, so they're working well together. <coughs> Do we have we hired recently more? Uh, Clerks? We're in that process. Okay. Thank you. How close are we got? That's <laughs> the real life question. Is. I'm sorry, okay. Councillor Delorier. Um, what what is this in reference to the? Uh, uh, first meeting, uh, and it was under the Derek heading. Uh, what is the Barker Lansdale agreement? Oh, uh, that's just a sale of a lot. Okay. Okay. Beer. Okay. Oh, land sale. Oh, lands. Oh, okay. I see. Yeah, there's, there's a, a keyword. There's yeah. Some letters mixed yeah. up. Councilor so, Moore, we approved last time. Yes. Yeah. On um, the 29th, uh, when it's it's under Derek's uh, contacting Kathy Cass with product care with. Oh, well, that is uh, that is to do with the the. I'm sure you guys know of the garbage pile. I guess you call it a paint and aerosol cans out of the recycle depot. Okay. Product care. Uh, we're we're in talks with them to become a household hazardous waste depot. And if we are a yeah, depot, that, that program we get program or we get program money to to get rid of that uh, waste. Now that you bring it back, then it comes back. From is that yeah, the same group that gave that pitch before. Yeah, and he quit earlier this summer. So, and he what he's the one who started it. So he had all the knowledge. So now there's people just kind of learning, and it's it's been a long process. But uh, we also require a building, so we we uh, changed the 2019 budget to include a uh, C can, which is approved. So. 
approved for use, not approved in our budget. Right. <laughs> Councilor White. Just tongue in cheek. I see Mike is having dips in the fuel. What's that about? He, he dips the airport fuel tanks. That's <laughs> <laughs> wonder. I, I dip in the lake. I want to dip in the fuel tank. <laughs> Thank you, Councilor White. All in favor? Okay, council member and uh, CO reports. Councillor Gray, you get first crack tonight. Um, during the weekend, I was I'm president of the National Manitoba Association of French Community. We met with the um, we happened to break for the legislative um, piece during one of the people we saw because we have independent business with him was um, Minister Friesen and I raised again the um, issue of Swan River and the, and the uh, CAT scan. Uh, he seemed incredibly receptive. I think that should be pressed uh, because I think whatever the management of the Prairie Mountain Regional Health wishes, Council Moore, so Moria, um, whatever their management wants, um, I think he would be inclined to be receptive. And so we should pass that point, even directly with him if we have to. I think that's the only thing I want to uh, speak about, other than things we've talked about uh, that are coming up, I presume. Okay. And, so I, and that's the only thing I mean, yeah. in the last two weeks. Um, other than maybe more more salt in front of the post office. <laughs> not because I care, but <laughs> because I my office is there. I don't care. But every person over seventy, including Pastor White, is <laughs> to me it's cool. about the fact that, that it's slippery in front of the post office because everyone goes to the post office every day to pick up their mail, no matter how little there is. But they have to get in and out of their cars. Really noted. Okay. I don't know if we have to get guys with chisels, do something to get the snow ice out there. Okay, thank you. Council White. I can't believe this happened. <laughs> uh, regardless, uh, PMH meeting on the 24th in Brandon. And and the CT scan was talked about there. I'm not sure whether it is PMH high priority or not. That would be for PMH to decide. I can simply say for myself and our team, it is definitely a high priority. Uh, they talked about the MRI opening of Dauphin. It sounds like it might be mid-December, but they're running some test runs with it right now. And that will certainly be worth being part of. And Councillor Gray is, is very, uh, what is the word, shy. He, with the rest of our team, three and a half days with the AMM, where you go from roughly 7.30 in the morning to late in the evening debriefing. But uh, regardless, it's a wonderful time for us to meet with the different cabinet ministers to lobby for our valley, and I think valley is the right word. I don't think that there are a few things specific to the community, but what the community is better gets better, the whole valley gets better. So I really was pleased with the cabinet ministers, they're very positive. I was pleased with meeting with the ministers, uh, the municipal councils from Swan Valley West and Minnetonas Bozeman, who were also there. Uh, our MLA and some other MLAs met with us uh, also. And the meetings. So certainly uh, it, was, it was a really good place uh, to be. Uh, the 29th of this month, uh, I had the pleasure with Councillor Mario and Councillor Rintoni to meet with the Fire Chief to talk about his plans and goals. Uh, those minutes have been shared with all of you, so I don't say need to go over all of them. But I think it's, yeah, I really appreciate having a proactive chief Hopefully, you can handle the word no because they had lots of dreams, lots of goals, but not but to make our team, our firefighting team, better. And they're all expensive. What's new? Uh, one of the things that popped up in there was the, uh, the issues of maintenance with vehicles within the, uh, the fleet of the town. There was a concern by some present that the data being recorded was in a, uh, lacking. What was the mileage? What was the issue? What did they fix? Why did they fix it? And as a consequence, that there was concerns, uh, you know, let's say a warranty thing pops up, well, you had the oil changed every time for the last six months, it's covered. But if you don't record that, don't record the vehicle and what's done, that, that leaves us open for some criticism. So 
some people within the within our utility are not taking our trucks they're going elsewhere because of that lack of uh, recording the appropriate information. I think that, that's something we should certainly look at a little better. And the last thing we mentioned is the sharps, two, two things, the sharps. We need to make a, I'd like to be part of the team because we're uh, Council Mori and I are on the Medical Service Committee. We've got to look at these sharps and we've got to get a sharp disposal of containers. We have to get them out there because uh, we're, we're certainly jeopardizing some people who don't know what they are. And you were talking about a tour date. Things are slowly calming down for all of us with our new appointments. I, I would certainly like to be part of a team. And there was a safety tour also being discussed about by Mr. Kirkpatrick. Thank you. Thank you, Council White. I, I don't know if the calming down is the right word, but it's getting out there. Councilor Delorier. Um, just uh, AMM was, uh, was very good as usual. Um, I noticed, uh, there were, I was surprised to hear that half the delegates were new, newly elected and I think the, the debate as far as the resolutions and, uh, some, of the, and some of the very quick questioning was, was a little bit tamer this year, especially the debate for the resolutions. Um, so I'm, I'm anticipating it's going to go up as, as the new councillors get more and more uh, familiar with the, with the process. Um, only thing I wanted to report back was uh, when we met with the Minister of Transportation. He, they, him and his subordinates did not seem to think it would be a problem and I went and spoke with them afterwards after our official meeting as well that it would be a problem for that to be winged so um, you should be hearing back and let us know if you're not as far as winging Main Street on their way out so that, that was positive Good. Uh, other than that I have nothing else to report Okay, Councillor Friesen um, I had a meeting last night with uh, Community Sick Care first time was very interesting. I found out a lot of interesting stuff. Uh, Lori Ann Monroe seems to be the backbone in that she organizes all the uh, activities that they do and right now they're doing the Toys R Us. They filled a police car full of toys on the weekend and um, Red Apple is uh, sponsoring them as well as suggesting to customers as they go through, would you like to buy a toy for this? And the clerks are, are stepping up to the plate. So that was good. Um, nothing really earth shattering. The Festival of Trees is on at the library. You're all welcome to come down and uh, enjoy that. Um, the Swan Valley Foundation is having their grant night on Thursday. Um, Communities in Bloom is receiving um, money. I think it's $1,500, which is great. Also the Fine Arts Society, which I'm also on, is receiving money. Um, I enjoyed the convention. I really enjoyed Minister Cox. She was uh, very receptive. In fact, I met her in the hallway after and it was like we were best friends. Um, it was really good to have Rick there, um, Mr. Wolchuk. Um, Rick Mercer was great at the gala, so were the fireworks, and I enjoyed Pinball Clemens. And I I think you're all invited to the band concert tomorrow night. Thank you. Thank you. You think? Just a <coughs> question, Councillor. Where and when for the foundation presentation? Westwood. At? 7.30. Thank you. Councillor Morio. Um, last week, I too was at the uh, AMM conference in Winnipeg. Um, so we met with a number of ministers and situate, um, sessions and things like that. One of the ones that we had, uh, our first one was with the RCMP, which they were quite receptive and we made our pitch uh, regarding the staff sergeant here. And we did talk about, along with the RCMP and the Minister of Justice regarding the Community Safety Officer Program. I did receive an email back from a lady from the Justice Department looking for more information as to what exactly we want and all that stuff. So. I'll correspond with her and bring that back to council for her, uh, for what information she can bring and all that with, with that. So it was uh, good to see on that. So um, along with that, AMM come home, came home, so people didn't know my house was broken into while I was gone. So luckily that now I'm on protective services. That's now going to be a passion of mine is crime in Swan River. Um, so if anybody in the public has any ideas on how crime reduction and stuff like that, get a hold of me because 
it's a bee in my bonnet at this point. Um, then we had a fire department meeting with the protective services and Councillor White has uh, discussed that already and things like that. But lots of wants, lots of needs, but how to fit it into the capital and operational budget. There's some ideas there how we can um, massage some of the costs and stuff like that uh, for things and how it uh, works with the entire valley and things like that instead of just go along with the Thomas Warner. So, um, and beyond that, for the next two weeks, I think like the rest of the councillors, we've got committee meetings the length of our arms as, as we get reacquainted with the files and things like that and brought up to speed. So um, there'll be a lot more to report next week. Okay, thank you. Councillor Montoni. <clears throat> first uh, first time attending AMM conference, um, definitely eye-opening and uh, very informative and I just want to commend our team on how professional we seem from a newcomer being in there, um, just how professional our council really is, how uh, supportive we are of each other and how dedicated we are to the town and the committees that we, that we serve. So that was impressive and um, definitely I'm proud of, of, of the team that I'm on and the, and the team that we have here. Other than that, um, so many meetings that I, I need a secretary to work for me to see the things organized. Um, but many meetings, um, many meetings to, to come and to Dwayne's comment about calming down. I'm, I wish I was with you, buddy, because that's not, I'm not in the same boat at the moment. But uh, yeah, looking forward to the... the the rest of the meetings that I do have and continuing the conversations with ratepayers. Okay, thank you. It, 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 it will get easier as time goes on. You're just you know one month into this, so uh, you know it is overwhelming, but uh, it, it'll it'll get easier. You know, and on that point, you know, with the AMM, you know, everything that was discussed, I truly believe also that we had a, a good team there. We. We, uh, we were organized, you know, we were professional as far as our presentations to the ministers, and I think the ministers recognize that. They see that who they're working with, and, uh, and I think it, it helps us uh, with uh, the government as well. Uh, the other thing I was going to mention also that in the past, it was my first term, I think maybe the first month of, of that, in 2010, that we used to have a junior counselor and uh, that kind of went to the wayside. So it's something that I think that I would like to uh, see if we can bring back and, and bring some young people back uh, to this you know, uh, forum. So it's something that I'm going to check with the school division and see if maybe perhaps we can recruit somebody as our junior counselor. So. Um, but anyway, sorry, counselor. Well, when you're done, sir, uh, just make a comment. Okay, I think one of the reasons our meetings with the many cabinet ministers went so well, because under your leadership, you asked those of us who had some expertise in the various areas, you would introduce us, then you'd speak briefly, and then you relied on your teammates, team members, to speak on the area that they, they felt on. Each of us that was given a small bit, so with the minister split, I spoke that he spoke. So it wasn't at all, hey, well, what about this? It was very well organized, and that came from your leadership. Uh, uh, your worship and uh, I appreciate that. Thank you. So we'll move on to uh, CO report. I'm oh, sorry, Councillor no, Gray. Well, I, I, I just reread Mr. Poole's return to my, my thing. I wasn't I didn't aware wasn't aware that we were dealing with AMM now. I thought it was going to be an, an item we dealt with. So, okay. so I, I do have some thoughts. Okay. And then there's the recreation grant piece that if you notice that we have a new kitty slide going in. I am concerned, and uh, uh, he's going to talk about sending two staff members to do that. I, I assume that they're going to be paid to do that, and so I'm a little concerned about paying overtime for that. But that's a different issue, right? That we may talk about in camera, right? Just the AMM. Um, I have to be the curmudgeon, apparently. That's my role in this group. I, I think we did a, a very effective job with respect to ministerial relations. I think that was. Outstanding. In in terms, however, of <laughs> the rest of the meeting, um, there two, three things. Firstly, have you done your letter to the education minister? I won't go further. Yeah. You have. Yeah. Good. Um, 
the resolutions were <laughs> trying to find the right adjective without being insulting to our colleagues and other municipalities. But many of them were, and the kindest were, I find ridiculous. They were foolish, and some of them, and and I think I don't know what how we do that. So um, I have to tell you, this year I was much more relaxed about it. And I, I didn't get involved um, in the debates. Um, I have to say, if I go to other years, I, I can't imagine being that restrained as I was this year with some of the really, really I, the idea of having CRA single out municipalities so that councillor indemnities would be exempt from CPP seems to me so unbelievable that someone would suggest it, um, to suggest that you could run for two offices at once. Unbelievable. You, you could go through the list of those, there were several that were self-evident, you know, um, that, the Mani that the province of Manitoba, it, it almost shouldn't require a resolution to say that the province of Manitoba should pay its fair share and should, in grants in lieu, be at least the same as a taxpayer. If, if, if a provincial government is off, is using a building as it does just down the street from us, how is it that they wouldn't pay the same rate as somebody else who had the same building? It doesn't make sense. And for them to cheat us seems wrong. Um, there is one other thing that caused me concern. It was the scheduling. Um, I was particularly, in a sense it's maybe the wrong word, but unhappy that the AMM allowed the ministerial forum run long, called for a break when, um, and not my political party, but another, the leader of another political party was talking and called for a break, leaving that room empty. That was unconscionable. It was political and it was partisan and it was wrong because governments come and go. And, and it may be right now it's in fashion, but AMM did itself no favors and did the rest of us no favors by being so blatantly partisan. And I think we should, if we have any capacity, we should be writing to our delegates um, and to the president, incoming president of AMM, suggesting that that shouldn't happen again. That that we should treat everybody with dignity and respect. And the failure to do that dishonors us more than it dishonors them. And I was incredibly unhappy about that. I thought it was disrespectful and and not very effective. And maybe it's effective this year, that's true. Um, I'm sure the Premier was very happy, but I, I don't think think we should look further than the next two years, 17 months. So that's what I wanted to say about that. So I'm sorry I didn't mention it before, um, but uh, I just thought we were dealing with it in a different context. And, and like I said, the rec grant is just note that we have a, a new slide. There is a, a staffing issue, but we'll do with that in right. yeah. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, Mr. Poole. Uh, yeah, I guess I want to welcome Roger as well and thank Council for for letting him come and, and, and help us out in the office. Uh, his uh, expertise, expertise has already proven helpful on several occasions. He's only been here for two days. But uh, it's, it's very appreciative. Uh, I, guess, I guess, yeah, as I, as I said, to Councillor White, uh, everybody's doing their share, pulling their weight. We know that it's our number one goal to, to fill these positions, uh, particularly out in the office and the, in the clerk setting, but uh, obviously Council's working hard to, to get the CAO position filled and, and uh, yeah, everybody's stepping up, getting their work done. And uh, me and Roger, have, or I guess I've created a list today. It's, it's not a full list, but it's a start to where we can start prioritizing and and getting some of the things in our office finished, <coughs> complete, and move on. I don't know if Roger you had anything to add to that. Uh, no, I think that was a good start, uh, having a list, so that at least we have some idea. Uh, I totally agree as far as filling in the positions. I think that's something that, so you don't get an overload on the people you have there now. And I, I think we're working on that. I understand that they're, they're except the council's working on for the single position. Um, no, I, you know, the first day was a little slow. We had a lot of catching up to do, but today I think we, you know, we can see we start to work on files and I'm taking over files off the veteran's desk, and that's the idea, to kind of help them as much as I can. I met all the staff in the office, and 
make them feel comfortable with me as I'm comfortable with them. You know, and it's uh, no, it's. Uh, I think it's going to go well, and uh, I really appreciate how I've been received here so far. And looking forward to, to the rest of it. Good to hear. Well, uh, we welcome you here, like I said before. So uh, thank you. We'll, we'll be using you to its fullest well, extent. That's what I'm here. <laughs> All right. So, more Councilor Gray. Go ahead. <laughs> The um, one thing, one of the things that we had proposed um, was that as bylaws were proposed, they would be posted on our website with that. How is that coming? Because I know we have some outstanding bylaws, and I don't see bylaw number one posted on our website. And we have some bylaws here. I'm going to be commenting on if they're are they still here? Uh, no, they were they were taken out due to procedure okay. error. But the the PDFs have been sent. Uh, I, I just didn't follow up on, on where they've been actually posted. But, okay. uh, well, I'm not worrying about yeah. the, the truth is I don't care about those bylaws per se. I, we'll get to them as we get to them. I do care that every bylaws first reading should be on our website. It should be available to the media, to the public, to everybody. So as we go through the process and then a posted meeting meeting, that we're, it has been referred to committee and posted committee meetings so that if people want to um, comment on it, they'll have an opportunity to. Because we'd agree that's how we we're going to do things from now on, and I think we should yeah. do that. Yeah, no, like I say, the, the PDFs can go there. They are, two of them are the current bylaws, so the people who look them up, I know me and Roger have discussed this a little bit, but uh, if they do go on the website, they, yeah. they won't see any proposed changes. I know it's not. I, I think the two that you're talking about as of Thursday there will be because we're going to be discussing them in committee on okay. Thursday and so we may have to <coughs> adjourn them to another committee date for anybody who wants to make representations. Yeah, yeah, and that's, I guess that's uh, just just one of the small things that we, or I guess Rogers pointed out, but uh, I do agree that uh, I know that I know that the intention of, of reading the, reading the, having the first reading go by on a bylaw that's about to be changed even though changes are not there or not, is uh, I don't know what I guess we I guess we feel that it, it would be it would be more transparent if, if we did have something that we were thinking of changing because because like you know I guess what, I'm trying to find the words but uh, uh, putting putting something out to the public that that we're proposing to change I think would be more effective than than the going through first reading putting up a bylaw that's been there for 15 years. They go look at it, and I'm pretty sure they'll be confused. Or I guess that's my feeling. I thought we actually had some changes proposed, but uh, that, that's fine. And in, in this case, you know, we just want to bring that ahead and start moving on it. Yeah. And, and uh, in most other cases, there will be the changes that will be in there. It's already, okay. already established or, or presented. So. Okay. Perfect. As long, yeah, I just want. Yeah. In the future, definitely there will be. Excellent. All right, so we'll move on. Uh, moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Gray. Result that the accounts is hereby approved for payment. General accounts from check number 23495 to number 23546. <coughs> total of $80,055.14. Bank debit check number 23547, the amount of $149. And payroll accounts from check number 4349 to number 4356 in the total of 111737 Discussion, Councilor Delorier. Two questions. Uh, both checks are right beside each other, 23517, 23518. Um, Pure Sound, is that some sort of DJ service, or what is, what is that? And then the next one is Rural Mechanical Solutions for 16000 um, who? They're in the explain explanation. Are they? Yeah. 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 I asked. I just I just looked in the question. Right. So I saw it. Halfway down. <laughs> oh, they're both in there. Yeah. Okay. Terry's amazing. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> You're satisfied with that, Councilor Dorian? Yeah, and I went through this. I don't. Uh, must have had a blind spot in my. Okay. Anybody else? In favor? <laughs> Carry. Yes, financial guy in the room. 
moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Gray, where, whereas the 2018 financial plan for the general operating fund including $100,000 to be transferred from accumulated surplus, be it hereby resolved that $100,000 be transferred from accumulated surplus to general operating fund. Discussion. So all in favor? Carried. Your, your Worship, I need to declare a conflict with the next item and I need to excuse myself. You shall be excused. <coughs> Moved by Councillor Gloria, seconded by Councillor Gray. Resolved that why not John a quotation for catering services for the 2018 Christmas supper be accepted. Discussion? Councillor Gloria. Uh, how many quotes did we receive on this? Two. Two? Yeah. There was no nobody else interested in quoting? Uh, uh, as far as, uh, no, everyone else was booked. Okay, I know we, we attacked this pretty late, so. Yeah. Councilor Morio. Uh, Councilor Glory asked the same question. I see there's two, and it looks like it's almost $3 a plate difference in price between the two, so. Our hard decision. Okay. All in favor? It's carried. You want to ask uh, Councillor Antoni to come back in? Yeah, we can do it twice as much safe. Okay. Huh. Well, I don't know if I can get twice as much. Oh, the date of your supper is? Our story is just a sick email. December. Moved by Councillor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor Morio, resolve Council close this meeting to the public and go to the Council Committee for discussion on the following Recreation Department legal matter. Discussion? All in favor? Should we also not talk about the CAO? Yeah, okay. Okay, we'll see you then. Yeah.